So you're trying to come up with the perfect business idea, but you've got a million of them running through your head. About 10 or 20 of them sound like a great idea. And that's creating some indecisiveness, some back and forth, some overwhelm. And most importantly, it is preventing you from feeling confident in what decision you should make and what business you should actually start. I mean, after all, you've always been so entrepreneurial that you've got so many good ideas that you know could just make you a millionaire. I get it. I hear it all the time and I experienced the exact same thing. But believe it or not, there is a technique step by step that you can employ in order to come up with the perfect business idea that you should go with. Want to know? Then let's get to work. All right, what's up, my loves? How are you today? I am excited. Let's talk about how to come up with this amazing business idea because I know that it's been a struggle. I know that you have been going back and forth. I know that you feel all over the place and I know you feel like you can't make a damn decision in order to move forward. So today I am going to walk you through step by step exactly how to come up with this perfect business idea so that you can move forward with the business of your dreams, making that money, making them decisions and getting that lifestyle freedom. All right. So let's get into this and start with step number one. So step number one is really what I call the ideation step, right? How is it that you need to come up with all the ideas, right? How do you narrow them down and figure out which are the ideas that are roaming around in your head are the best ideas? And there are two things that I want you to consider in this particular step, all right? The first thing is you need to understand your strengths and your passions. It's not just about what you are passionate about. It's not just about what you love doing. It is also about what you are good at doing. The intersection of what you're passionate about and what you're good at doing is the only ideas that I want you to put into this bucket. So you may have business ideas in your head right now that include stuff that you've seen other people doing or that when you're scrolling on Instagram, somebody else looks like they're making a ton of money with. Or if somebody out there says they're very successful at doing something, you think to yourself, I could do that. I could do that. So it all gets put into this big bucket of business ideas and possible business ideas. That doesn't mean that everything in that bucket is something that you should pursue. So what I am telling you to do in order to clear, begin to clear out the clutter of that bucket, almost like clearing out the color, the clutter of my sock drawer, because I'm the girl, I don't know about you, but I'm the girl that will take every sock and put it in a drawer and not care if they match or not. Right. But, but now my sock drawer is full of clutter is you got to do with your bucket. Like I have to do with my sock drawer and actually sit down, dump the whole sock drawer on my bed, sit there with my legs crossed and begin to to ultimately find and pick out what's feasible for me to keep. And the only things I want you to keep in that ideation bucket are the things that intersect both passion for you and strength and skill. What do you love doing, but also what you are good at doing? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Okay, that's the intersection and ideation. So once you understand those, narrow that bucket down to just those things. Once you've found that intersection of business passions and strengths, the second thing that you need to do is to make sure that there is market need for it, right? Because you've taken the big bucket or the big drawer of socks, and now you've got maybe, you know, a handful of socks or ideas. What's going to help you narrow it down even more is the market reason research, right? For you to explore the market and the market need. And you got to make sure that when you're doing this, that you're focusing around identifying the gaps and the needs that are out there and how to ultimately determine if this, these, this, this bucket, this smaller bucket, this handful of socks is even a good idea. Once you do this market research, it's going to help you narrow down these business ideas even more so that you could come up with a really good one. All right. So now that you have narrowed it down even more, right? You've, you've, you've come up with all the ideas, you put them in a big buck, you understand the passion, your passion and skill intersection. So you've narrowed down your sock drawer to a handful of socks. You've done some market need research. So you've narrowed it down even more. Now I want you to do step number two, which is brainstorm 
and begin to document and make a list of what you're left with, right? I want you to, to, to make that list of what you're left with. Now, hopefully, in that first part, you have narrowed it down to what I would consider to be your top five choices. I want you to narrow it down to your top five. We gotta get these ideas down to top five. If you can get it down to less than five, mwah, perfection. Ideally, if you can get it down to two, it'd be great. But I'm gonna give you five because I know how we get down as entrepreneurs and sometimes we done, we just started with 50 and we need to get it down to five. So at least five, ideally two, narrow down your list and, and look at those two and then move on with step number three. And step number three, once you've got that top five or ideally top two, right, is to validate continue validation. But that includes evaluating the market potential. So is there money to be made in the market for this particular top five or top two? And then assessing the competition. Is there truly competition out there? And the answer that I want you to know that you are looking for is yes, there is competition out there. I need you to make sure you find the competition. And then I want you to make sure that this, these top two, if the answer to market potential, yes, there's money to be made. Yes, there's competition, but there is a space for me to fill in, fit in. The last thing I want you to be thinking about in this is, is this business feasible and is it compatible with me personally? All right. Is it compatible with me personally? That means, does this business model fit my lifestyle goals? Does this business model fit my personality? Does this business model that I am thinking about doing fit where I am in my life right now? You know, in line with your lifestyle, I mean, Think about where you want your life to be. What are some of the things you want to experience in your life? Do you want to have flexibility to travel? Do you want to not be tied down by a particular thing? Do you not necessarily want to have to be on site? Do you want to be able to work from the beach or from the pool? Like is my case, y'all. So when you're considering all of those things, do you want to be able to be free and have flexibility to attend your ch children's events? Those types of things in your lifestyle preferences are very, very important in order to determine the personal and feasibility, personal compatibility and feasibility of this business idea. You want to make sure that you're incorporating that in. I had a client at one point, a coachee who had all of these lifestyle goals to be able to be free and to travel and to go different places, but at the same time was considering and almost hell bent on starting a business that required a brick and mortar physical location. And with that physical location that we were working through, it was very clear that at least in the first five years or so, she was going to have to be, you know, confined to being local. She was going to have to be confined to being there, which was going to impact her ability to be able to travel and to do all of the things that she ultimately wanted to do. And with that being said, she wasn't going to be able to love and truly give everything to the business and not eventually feel like the business was stopping her from living her life. So when we talk about this particular step, the feasibility of the business and the personal compatibility of the business model, that is what I'm talking about. I'm also talking about looking at your personal financial situation. I caution you against choosing a business that is going to require you to have tons of business credit and tons of financial investment if you aren't personally in a space where your personal credit can carry that. I get the question all the time from people that say, how do I get my business credit? How do I get money? How do I get capital? But my business credit score is a 550 and I need you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to move forward with this business. Well, well, to me, that means that you need to probably shift the business idea that you're working on right now into more of a future business idea once you're able to get your financial situation together. If you don't have a financial situation in place right now personally that allows you to be able to get all that capital and get all of that business credit, then you've got to adjust. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a personal credit score of 550 but need a business credit score of 750 in order to be able to move forward with your business idea. My advice in that situation 
is to adjust the business idea. Start smaller. Start with something that doesn't require all of that capital so that you can build the financial stability and the financial personal financial goals in order to be able to ultimately get to that next level of business. It's okay. We're not saying that you can never have that business that you're thinking of. We're just saying that right now might not be the time. So when you are finalizing this business idea, taking all of those things into consideration is going to be cre critical. Remember this step, the feasibility in the market, but also the personal compatibility is going to be a critical piece to choosing the perfect business idea. Now, once you've come up and narrowed it down, because after you've done all of these steps, I'm telling you that big sock drawer that I started talking about should now be down to a couple pair of socks, right? A couple of business ideas. Um, and you're going to ultimately settle on one. This means that you need to move on to step number three which is business idea refinement, right? Continue to refine the idea. Continue to narrow the sock drawer down to just one pair of socks. You are going to now say, all right, I've got two pair of socks and this is ultimately where I think I'm going, but now I need to make sure that I pick just one. And with that just one, you're gonna refine that idea even more. You're going to look off of that feedback that you're receiving. So you're gonna start putting it out there a little bit. With that ideal customer that you've thought about is gonna be perfect for this particular business, start asking them questions. Is this a good idea? Would you pay for this? If so, what would you be paying for? Would the services that I'm thinking about providing you with be something that you would take advantage of? Continue to get feedback and test this business idea before you full-fledged move forward with it because some adjustment might be required. Also continue to do that research. You're going to uncover with more information comes more empowerment. And the more empowered that you are, the quicker that you'll be able to make decisions and you'll be able to have that clarity that you need in order to finally decide. If you are still in a space when you're coming up with this business idea that you're all over the place and you're still not sure, that's a key indication that you don't have enough information. So in this step of refinement, continue to gather the information that you need in order to be able to settle on a business idea. You got to make sure that you've got in this particular phase of refinement, a very unique value proposition and making sure that what you are proposing that you're going to move forward with is something that's going to truly be able to satisfy you, but also satisfy the market that you are potentially embarking upon working with. So with all of these steps, my love, you should definitely have narrowed down this sock drawer, right? You should be able to sketch out an initial business model that will bring for you together all of the things that I've been talking about that really covers all of these steps. And you will find I've got a lot more clarity. I've actually got an idea about the direction that I should be going and which thing I should be pushing forward with. Hopefully this video is very, very helpful for you because I know the space that you have been in. I know the confusion. I know the lack of clarity. I know the stress and the overwhelm that that can create. And by following these three steps and really taking into consideration everything that I have gone over with you, step one, two, and three, you will be able to walk away with the perfect business idea to build a life of freedom and decision-making, financial, and lifestyle goals that you ultimately want to achieve. So until next time, my loves, thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure that you give me a like, that you subscribe, and I hope to see you in both of those on the other side. Until next time, my loves, I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Mmm.